Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. With your spirit. I'd like to welcome all of you here this afternoon. I'd especially like to welcome those who are joining us um, virtually, and uh, we're very glad that um, you're able to um, tune in and be a part of this liturgy. Um, we hope that all of us will be together safely as it continues to, the, the pandemic continues to uh, dissipate. But until that day, um, we're all in this together, whether you're at home or here in church, and we're praying for each other as we continue to um, participate in the life of God each day of our life. And let us pray. <clears throat> O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously listen to our prayers. Without you, we can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following what you ask us to do, we may please you by our resolve and by our deeds. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it in a high lofty mountain on the mountain heights of Israel. I will plant it and I shall put branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing on the shade of its boughs. And the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to you most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout. 
but the night. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon he shall grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord my rock in whom there is no wrong. reading from the second letter of the St. Paul to the Corinthians. Sisters and brothers, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight, yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each receives recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is, it is if a farmer were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, and he doesn't know how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain of the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest time has come. He said again, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It's like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes one of the largest plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. Now with many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them and they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own, his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
One of the things I enjoy about being a human being is the fact that um, there seems to be an innate curiosity inside of me and actually in all of us. It's not just me, but it's all of us. We're curious people. We look out beyond ourselves and sometimes we scratch our head and say, what is that all about? What's going on over there? Who are you? Why is this happening? We stand back and we're amazed at things way beyond our understanding, like going to Mars and having a little helicopter fly around and then send pictures back immediately for us to look at. How does all that happen? And it's that curiosity that keeps us moving through our lives. Sometimes the curiosity can get out of hand. And when it gets out of hand, and with people who it's gotten out of hand for, it's not curiosity anymore. It's just being simply nosy and minding somebody else's business other than their own. But that's not the curiosity I'm talking about. I wouldn't imagine any of, any of you are in that situation either. The disciples are curious. They hear Jesus talk about the kingdom of God. Well, what's it like? Tell us. The people are interested. And so he gives us two examples of what the kingdom of God is like, both involving seeds that are planted into the ground. And the utter amazement that a little seed planted in the ground can grow and be so beautiful, so luscious, so fruitful, that it gives back a hundredfold. What is the kingdom of God like? You know, we're curious about human things, but we're just as curious about divine things. What is that kingdom of God like? A lot of times we spend thinking about, well, where is it? Well, it's up there. Or maybe it's over there. It's surely beyond our imagination, the place that it might exist. But remember, Jesus said, it isn't up there. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's not up there. It's not over there. The kingdom of God is among us. And what did he mean by that? My kingdom is not of this world, which is why generations of people have thought, literally, that it's beyond us, off the globe, someplace floating along in the great galaxy of the sky. He didn't mean that at all. The kingdom of God being among us is right here and right now. And unfortunately, sometimes the noise in the world and in our life stops us from hearing the goodness of the kingdom of God as stories are being told to us from people who are in front of us every day. Or our eyes are blurred because we're not looking to see. We're just looking. And so we fail to see. The kingdom of God among us is manifested in the seeds that you and I plant, not in the ground we walk on, but in the hearts of the people we live with. Every time you and I plant a seed of compassion in somebody else's heart, the kingdom of God is manifested. Every time we plant a seed of justice so that the fruit of justice will be peace, the kingdom of God is being manifested. Every time you and I cross a line and work to forgive and be forgiven, the kingdom of God is being manifested. 
every time you and I simply say, I love you. No conditions, no expectations, nothing other than the sure goodness of my heart coming to you and yours coming to me. The kingdom of God is being manifested. It is in our midst. So we are curious. Stay curious. Find ways to discover this kingdom of God among us. And when you and I participate in planting those seeds that bring new life to the people around us and they plant seeds that bring new life to us, there is the kingdom of God. We're standing right in the middle of it. And it should make us get on our knees and simply say, thanks be to God, you are using me at this moment in history to make your kingdom known and loved while I live here on earth and with the people you have given me to care for while I am here on earth. Let us pray for the needs and the needs of people everywhere. In thanksgiving for the summer programs that provide lunches for the many children in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations and peoples of the earth will embrace justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the community of Assumption Parish always be joyful, expression of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, homebound, or hospitalized, especially Colleen Scales, Haley Torville, and Kelsey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Sade and George, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, as brothers and sisters of Jesus, we are mindful of your care for us. May we always give you praise and make your kingdom known and loved and be ever grateful for the opportunities you give us each day to thank you forever and ever. my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and of all God's holy church. It's so loud in here, isn't it? It used to be so quiet. Now what am I supposed to? Oh. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gifts that you give us. May they become for us your loving presence in our midst, Jesus the Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have laid the foundations of the world. You have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image, setting us over the whole world in all its wonder. 
You made us the stewards of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and love as we have come to recognize them in Christ Jesus. And so we join the hosts of heaven as we praise you in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race. You always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Father, we ask that you send forth the power of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts. They may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples and he said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offerings of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Archbishop, and your entire people. Always keep our eyes open to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in word and in action to bring comfort to those who labor and are burdened. Help us to serve each other truly after the example of Christ and it, at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and to freedom, to peace and to justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, 
we shall praise you and we shall exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us join together and pray for the coming of the kingdom as God has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your love and mercy, may we always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who are joining us from home, I'm going to pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand and let us pray.
Almighty God, you have nourished us with this holy food. It foreshadows the union of the faithful in you. May it bring about unity and peace in your church as we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, Sweet prayer.